there, welcome to another edition of Solve My Math Homework. Okay, so today's is a calculus optimization problem. It involves being on an island and having a certain rate at which you sw uh, row a boat and a certain rate at which you walk and you wanna know the uh, optimal place to land your boat so that you can get to some place in the shortest distance. So we're gonna minimize time. Okay, so a small island is three kilometers from the nearest point P on the straight shoreline of a large lake. Okay, so here's P, this is the shoreline up here, this is water here, these are my weak attempt at waves. So the entire distance here we'll see is 12. So we've got a woman, she's on this island over here. This drawing was provided, that's why I'm not explaining it too much. But we've got a woman on an island that can row her boat at 2.5 kilometers per hour and she can walk at four kilometers per hour. So if she's on this island, we wanna know where she wants, where she should land her boat to arrive in the shortest time to a town that happens to be 12 kilometers down the shore from point P, okay? So the first thing we have to do is, when we're doing a maximize or minimize or an optimization problem, we really have to find the equation that we wanna maximize or minimize, okay? And then we have to worry about getting that down to one variable. So here we want to uh, minimize time, okay? So if we're minimizing time, we know, and then I'll kinda redraw this in, in, uh, in a second here. If we want to minimize time, we know that distance equals rate times time. And if we know distance equals rate times time, then time is equal to distance over rate, okay? So the thing we want to minimize here, we wanna minimize the time spent rowing and the time she spent walking. Okay, so we're minimizing time, but she's got two different times. She's gonna have some time spent rowing, some time spent walking, because she is on that island. Okay, so let's look at that diagram again. Okay, so here, if we take just a simplified version of it, we have the town that we're trying to get to here, we have the island down here, and we have this here. We know this was X distances, right? We don't know, X is where we're gonna land the boat. So we know the whole thing here is 12. We know that the island, the thing over here, right, is three kilometers away. So we can easily find the distances we need using the Pythagorean theorem. So it kind of gave you a clue. It drew this solid line from the island at an angle to that shoreline, telling you, hey, the shortest answer is not gonna go three kilometers this way and then all the way this way. Okay, so let's figure out this, this right here. This is how much she rose. Okay, so how much is she going to row? Well, we know a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, so we know that the time spent or the distance rowing is going to be the square root of x squared plus nine. Okay, and the distance walking, let's see if I can get another color for distance walking. Distance walking, if the whole thing is 12 and this unknown distance here is x, that she's not walking because that's the angle she took to row, this is 12 minus x, okay? So now we have some stuff figured out there. So we know that we're gonna minimize time and time, but we need an equation for the time. So we said time is distance over rate. Okay, well the problem gave us our rates. The rate at which she rose is 2.5 kilometers, um, and the rate at which she walks is four kilometers, okay? So let's go ahead and put this into an equation that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so the thing that we are going to minimize is, let's see, time, you still see that, yes? So time is gonna be the distance rowed all over her speed rowing, right? So speed that she rows plus distance that she walks over her walking speed. All right, so let's go ahead and put that into some context. We know the distance that she rode. We just figured it out, square root of x squared plus nine. We know the distance she walks, 12 minus x. The problem gave us both speeds. So we're good to go ahead and write an equation. It's not gonna be a pretty equation, but we can write it. Okay, so move that down a bit. Let's fill everything in. So we have time equals, remember her distance that she rode, or rose, is x squared plus nine over the speed 2.5, plus the distance that she walks is 12 minus x all over her speed, which is four. All right, so we have an equation. Um, 
it is in one variable. I'm not sure it's super pretty. In fact, I hate the denominators. So we're just going to make these uh, denominators fractions that we multiply. So let's move this down again. And let's just call this 1 over 2.5. And let's change, remember we always change square roots to powers of 1 half plus 1 fourth. Oops, shaking there a little bit. 1 fourth, 12 minus x. So this is going to be our t of x. Okay, so that's our t of x. And we have to derive that thing, but that's okay. It's actually not as bad as it looks, especially if we take those denominators and we get rid of them. Okay, so let's move this over so we can see something happening. Okay, all right, so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and derive t of x now. So if t, t prime of x, so we're gonna say one half times one over 2.5, which is two, two times 2.5, so that's one fifth, Okay, so that's not too bad. So we got one fifth, right? And we're gonna have x squared plus nine, x squared plus nine, remember we're gonna chain rule. So to the negative one half power and then we take the derivative of what's inside, so two x. So far so good, making sure you can still see that. Let's move it up a little bit. Okay, so, um, and then we have over here, so 1 fourth times 12, that's going to be uh, 3, and the derivative of a 3 is 0, and the derivative of a constant is 0, and then 1 fourth times negative x, so we're going to have minus 1 fourth as the derivative there. So I think that's okay so far. It's not great. Let's clean this up a little bit more. So t prime of x, let's say we've got 2x over 5. We have, oof, let's bring that back down to the numerator. Let's see if we can't do this. Let's say 2x all over 5 times, and I'm going to make this a square root again, because negative exponent is in the denominator, right? Minus 1 fourth. And I think that's as good as it's getting. But we want to, okay, so optimization. What happens with optimization when you want to find your critical values? It means taking the derivative and setting it equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. And with the magic of a whiteboard, we could just say instead of this, it equals zero, okay? And we wanna add one fourth to both sides. That's the easiest step. So one fourth is gone here and it's one fourth here. So let's get rid of this, let's clean this up a little bit. Oh heck, we'll just do this. Equals one fourth. All right, that actually doesn't look terrible. Now we can, you know, I would say normally you can simplify the two going into the four, but it's neither here nor there because we need to get rid of the four, the entire denominator. So let's just multiply by four and let's just get eight X over five square root of X squared plus nine equals one. Okay, it's better. It doesn't look better, but it is. And so at this point, what I want to do is just get remove that whole denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by five times the square root of X squared plus nine. And when I do that, so multiply it here, it'll cancel. And then it will appear over here because we multiply to both sides. Okay, so that goes away. Now this is just an X, 8X over here on this side. So 8X, still getting better, I promise. Okay, square root is now a problem. So we are going to square both sides of this equation to get rid of it. So squaring a square root, they are inverse operations. They just undo one another. So we get 64x squared equals, let's see, the, don't forget to square the 5, 25 times x squared plus 9. Okay, so that's not great. 64x squared equals 25x squared plus 225. All right, now we want to gather our x squared terms or our x terms on the same side of the equation. Let's bring this down a little bit here, okay? So we're going to say minus 25x squared minus 25x squared. So we get 39x squared. Okay, 39x squared equals 225. Divide by 39, divide by 39. Okay, can you still see? We can. Let's bring this down a little bit. And hopefully it stops shaking. Okay, so we get x squared equals 225 over 39, which means x is the square root of this. So x equals 15 over the square root of 39. 
And we're in calculus, so we don't have to rationalize our denominators anymore, so that's kind of nice. So we go ahead and put that in. We get x is approximately 2.4 when we go ahead and solve for that. Okay, so now normally we use the second derivative in order to confirm that something is a max or a min. We are not going to do that. So, and actually, I'm going to run out of room and time. So what we're, I'm going to suggest the easiest way to determine if this is a minimum is to go back to your original equation, and we're going to put, we're going to assume that this is a minimum. We've gotten one value, we're minimizing, we're going to assume it's a minimum, and then we are going to plug that in and see if we plug in numbers lower or higher if this is, in fact, a minimum. Okay, and so I uh, encourage you to do that. Don't just put 2.4 as your answer, but go ahead and definitely do not, with these numbers and these, this equation, if you use the second derivative, you'll just throw your notebook out the window. It's just not worth it. Assume it's a minimum, and this is a distance, remember? Okay, that's why I didn't do anything with the negative square root. Assume this is the distance that will minimize her time to get to town. I hope this helped. It wasn't pretty. If you have questions, pop them in the comments section.